Beaufort Delaney is a little different than Woodruff and Alston in the sense that his work becomes completely non-objective. I mean, Delaney had a very profound experience in the early 1920s when he was in Boston and he saw an exhibition of Monet, Monet water lily paintings. And for him, the idea of light and water and abstraction became the essence of his art. And after he left the United States in 1953, um, and he moved to Paris, where other Americans had also gone after the war, he suddenly had the courage, one might say, to abandon representational imagery and to let light and rhythms um, take over his work. And his work really becomes completely non-objective. It's about gestures of color. And there really isn't the sense of his African-American identity. And the same holds true for Alma Thomas, whose abstractions are also rooted in nature. Norman Lewis was the only artist who really sat at the table, so to speak. Occasionally, one will see there's a, there's a, there are some famous photographs of some of the abstract expressionists meeting in the early 1950s. And there is one man with dark skin sitting at the table, and that's Norman Lewis. Of this group of abstract artists, there certainly has been a sort of a slow, steady, if you want to call it, snowballing growth of interest and market in Alma Thomas, Beaufort Delaney, and Norman Lewis. There's no question that those three artists, we've seen their markets evolve significantly in the past 10 years. And the growth of interest, again, it's, it really is like a, this really is sort of a snowballing effect. It's, there's much more interest now than there was a year ago, and next year I anticipate there'll be that much more interest. Um, and with acquisitions by museums and collectors um, around the country and with inquiries and, and, and collecting abroad as well. Their markets are not quite as strong, whereas you know, major paintings by um, Woodruff and Alston can be, very, very major paintings can be $75,000 to $250,000. Major paintings by Norman Lewis, Beaufort Delaney and Alma Thomas can be several hundred thousand dollars for the, for the very, very best and the largest and the finest quality. That being said, there is quite a difference between um, the top market um, for Jackson Pollock and Rothko and other abstract expressionists. But we've also seen, though, in the past decade, we've seen certain artists like Joan Mitchell and like Lee Krasner. We've seen them evolve tremendously in the market um, and appreciation for their art as artists as well. And I think they go hand in hand and I, I anticipate that we'll continue to see that kind of um, growth of awareness um, and probably the growth of the market for all the artists that we're discussing. The market was very active with historic African-American artists, including the abstract expressionists, if we want to call it the first generation of African-American abstract artists. Um, the market was very active with younger collectors 15 years ago to around five years ago. And interestingly, we saw many young collectors shift their interest to contemporary artists. However, the last two years or so, we've seen an, a dramatic return and in interest from young collectors and museums to collecting this generation of African-American artists that serve very much as the mentors to the contemporary artists. And as many collections, institutions, and private collections, many of these have, been, have collected contemporary art, they've become very interested in what preceded them. We've had that same experience also with young artists. There are many young artists well, not, who have become very successful. And they're also very interested in looking at and learning and even collecting the history of African-American art. So we've seen this return, which is very exciting.